Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing our Morphe saga and we left it off uh, after uh, Morphe defeated uh, Johann Jakob Löwenthal, a Hungarian master with a result of either 3 to 0 or 2 and a half to half, uh, we, we don't know. Uh, but uh, here uh, is a game from 1854. Now, from 1850 to 1854, Morphy did not play a single chess game. Or, well, not a single game that was recorded, as uh, he w he was going to school and he didn't really uh, w he didn't really want to play chess. He didn't. Um, uh, study it, he didn't uh, tr try to b become better at chess or, or anything like that. And here he faces uh, his closest friend and his uh, school classmate, uh, Charles Amédée du Morion, uh, or something like that, as he is of French descent, not, not really sure how to pronounce that. Uh, and um, it's a very interesting. One day, um, Charles asked uh, Morphy, how, how is it that two in the intelligent beings uh, move little pieces around the board and uh, call that uh, recreation or something? And that, then Morphy told him, uh, well, if you knew how to play chess, uh, maybe you would understand. And then uh, at, at some point, they were uh, together in the infirmary, and then uh, uh, Morion asked uh, Morphy if he would teach him how to play chess. And Morphy said okay, and, and he thought, uh, taught him how to play chess as they, they were in the infirmary for a few days. Now, uh, we're going to get back to that, but I know why you're one, what you're wondering. Uh, where are there pieces missing here? Morphe is missing a rook and a knight. Well, uh, Morphe always gave uh, Morion odds. Uh, even when Morion became a, a stronger player, he still gave him at least a knight odds, even though there, it wasn't necessary, as he really became a lot stronger. Uh, but Morphe still uh, felt that uh, he, he should give him uh, at least knight odds. Now, we left it off at uh, 1850. Now, if you check the database, there are no games in 1851. 1852, 1853, and even in 1854, there aren't all that many games, only some friendly games between his uh, uncle Ernest, Ernest Morphy uh, and his uh, classmate, uh, uh, good, old, good old Charles uh, Amédée de, de Morion. Now, uh, as we mentioned, in, in 1850, Morphy enrolled into Spring Hill College in Mobile, uh, Alabama, uh, after finishing uh, uh, Jefferson Academy, and uh, he, he, he did it really well. He excelled in Latin, in Greek, in uh, French, in English, in, in mathematics. Uh, he really enjoyed philosophy, and uh, he got his bachelor's, bachelor's degree in 1854, well, or at least something uh, that would be similar to today's bachelor's degree, and in 1855, a year later, uh, he, he got his master's degree. And later, uh, he enrolled into, into law school, and two years later, in 1857, he finished law school, but he was... Um, he was too young to practice law, so uh, he had to do something. He had to wait for a whole year, and of, then, of course, he, he decided to play some chess. So this is uh, uh, one of the games uh, between his bachelor's, bachelor's degree and master's degree in 1854, uh, played against his, uh, uh, well, uh, schoolmate, and uh, here he, he's just giving him two pieces odds. But it's quite, quite an exciting game. Uh, even though uh, the, the, these are quite the odds. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's check it out. So Morphy opens with e4 and we have e6. We're not going to call it the French defense since he's missing, um, uh, well, some pieces. Uh, we have f4 and now d5. Uh, Morion goes for the center right away as he should with e5 by Morphy. Uh, as Morphe is already down material, he should really avoid trading anything. He just needs to make the position as complicated as possible. So, knight to e7, uh, and uh, now comes knight to f3. Uh, we have knight e to c6, and now g4 by Morphe. Uh, we have bishop to e7, and now d4. So, quite, quite a nice expansion here. We have castles, and now c3, just strengthening the center. Uh, and here, uh, we have f5. If bishop to h4, Morphy was probably uh, considering some like king e2, maybe even put the king on d3. Uh, just, uh, you know, try and force uh, his friend to find ways how to, how to uh, play the game. Even though it's not all that complicated, if he really understood chess, he would know that he just, uh, well, needs to trade down. Although that's easier said than done, as you'll see in this game. So, f5. Uh, and Morphy goes e captures on f6 on Poisson. We have bishop captures on f6 uh, and now h4, preparing to push even further with the g5. And now knight to a5, uh, freeing the, the c6 square for, uh, for this knight. So uh, as you can see, black is having some problems developing his pieces. Uh, we have g5 uh, attacking the bishop, bishop to e7 and now even h5. Morphy wants to uh, push h6 and open up the position. Uh, we have knight to d7 now instead, uh, and bishop to d3, Morphy uh, already attacking h7 here, and now knight to b6. 
So not the greatest way to develop your pieces when all the action is on the king side, but uh, you know, you, you live, you learn. Uh, we have queen to c2, now Morphe puts, uh, that's a d2, queen to c2, Morphe puts pressure on the h7 pawn, uh, and now you could pretty much do anything here. You're still up material, so uh, ideas like bishop to d6 are, are good, just going after the f4 pawn. Uh, also, you might consider rook to f5, you could give up some material, you don't really care, you're, you're up uh, a rook and a knight. Uh, but here, uh, Morion goes for h6. And the Morphe just says, okay, thank you, G captures on H6, we have G captures, and now uh, this position just shows uh, how uh, how careless Morphe played this game, and he didn't really uh, think too much of, of his uh, good friend Morion, uh, because here, queen to H2, uh, queen to G2 check is uh, winning on the spot pretty much, because if king F7, it's mate, and after, uh, after uh, this queen to G2 check, if you move the king, king H8, now queen G6, you threaten mate, rook to uh, rook has to block, now rook to f5, the only way to prevent this, but now queen captures on h6 with check. King g8 and now rook to g1 with check. King f7, now queen g6 check and after this you're just getting mated. So uh, this game just, uh, well, shows that Morphe was... Um, Probably even just uh, teaching uh, teaching Charles uh, or or Charles. Uh, I don't know if his name is still pronounced French or maybe it's just Charles Morian. Uh, who knows? Uh, but yeah, uh, Morphy uh, didn't want to end it right away, so he played rook to g1 uh, with king to h8, or and now rook to g6, just uh, going for that h6 pawn. Uh, and here rook to f6. Uh, Morian defends properly. Uh, we have queen to g2. Uh, and now comes queen to f8. Here you have to be careful. Here Morphe is threatening uh, rook g7 followed by rook to h7 mate. The bishop still covers the h7 square. So queen to f8 not allowing rook to come to g7 and now knight h4. If the rook is ever captured you can always recapture with the knight uh, when, when the queen could be, could be nice. So queen to f7 getting the queen away from such a a nasty square and now Morphe just continues marching forward f5 and here he really puts a, a nice task in front of Morion uh, will you will you calculate this properly or not so here's what happens if you if you really go into this uh, e captures on f5 now comes for example bishop captures on f5 there are so many lines because black is still up material you can pretty much do anything but let's say bishop captures knight captures and rook captures uh, now uh, this this wouldn't be okay because of for example rook captures and h6 and here you have to part with the queen uh, queen h7 captures captures and now queen g6 check even wins the rook uh, so here it would be white who's better uh, so uh, uh, Charles decides not to capture the pawn as a lot of things can go wrong uh, as you've just seen so he continues developing he wants to bring this rook into the game and okay, still still winning for black, not a problem. Uh, we have bishop captures on h6 by Morphe, and now rook to g8, not allowing bishop g7 or rook to g7. Uh, and here, bishop to g5, again. So what do you play here? Uh, there are, again, a lot of things you could play. For example, rook g captures on g6 can be played, but then you get f captures on g6, and this is now actually winning for white. Uh, because if you move the queen, uh, and, well, you, you kind of have to move the queen, for example, queen to f8, you get h6, and this just, uh, well, now wins. Uh, of course, you cannot even capture, because captures and you lose the queen. So, not, not gonna happen. Uh, on the other hand, you could try rook g7, uh, which which is possible, but then you, you get bishop captures on f6, uh, and if queen captures, then you get rook captures on g7. Uh, queen captures on g7 and knight g6 check, again with a very complicated play, uh, for example king h7, now f captures on e6, opening up a discovery from this bishop. Uh, well, not a discovery, but a, but a preparation for a discovery. And after bishop captures on e6, now you cannot capture uh, the bishop here with the discovered check because after king h6, you don't really have a good way of continuing the attack. So after queen d2 check, uh, black can always block queen to g5. So that's not really a problem. So after this uh, uh, bishop captures on e6, you cannot capture. You'd have to go for something like knight to f4 check. Uh, but then at least after the, the king moves, you will get something like captures, captures, and you will grab this with check. King h6, now we're going to capture here. And after captures, uh, you're down a piece, but you're up two pawn. You're up a pawn, but for example, check, uh, bishop f3, you can pick up this pawn. Uh, so it will be two pawns for a piece. Black is of course still better, uh, but uh, Morion is nowhere nowhere near, near as skillful to, to uh, you know, tackle Morphe, even if he reached this end, end game. 
So instead, we have rook f captures on g6 by Charles, and now comes knight captures on g6 with check. So what do you do here? We have rook captures on g6, but uh, uh, ignoring this isn't better. For example, if king h7, then f6 just wins, you open up this uh, diagonal, and now pretty much everything wins. There are ideas like knight e5 win, wins the queen. Uh, and if you try king g7, it's still the same thing. f6 now comes with check, and after, after some trades here, bishop captures, now h6 is deadly. So Morphy has everything under control here. If king h7, now you have knight e5 check. Now uh, the queen is under attack. Uh, so you might as well give it up. Knight captures, rook captures, and now even bishop captures on f6. Opens up an attack here. The rook is pinned. You cannot capture the queen due to the bishop. Uh, so not much you can do here. So instead, Morio played rook captures on g6, but now h captures on g6. We have queen to g7, and here queen to h1 by Morphy. Uh, we have king to g8 of uh, getting out of check and now f6 and it was uh, in this position on move 25 that uh, Charles Amédée de Morion uh, resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here which is quite quite impressive as it really it's not easy to calculate why this is this is game over especially if you're not not uh, a really skilled player uh, like our good friend Charles here uh, but feel free to pause the video for example if bishop captures on f6 how does white win here uh, Try and figure it out while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not playing bishop captures on f6. Uh, uh, well, because uh, this just uh, leads to nowhere. After queen h7 checking f8, you don't have a continuation. No way to continue this attack. So congratulations to those of you uh, who found it and also to those of you who just want to enjoy the show. After bishop captures on f6, queen to h... Uh, sorry. Uh, after uh, bishop captures on f6... Uh, uh, not that, but rather queen to h7 check. This is uh, this is winning now. And now you have to capture. For example, if captures, then you just deliver check. And if you block, this is mate now. Uh, a double bishop mate, if you will. Quite, quite the beauty. Uh, also, after queen to h7 check, uh, you could capture. Uh, and then after captures, go somewhere else. But it still doesn't matter. Bishop captures with check. The pawn is guarded. You have to either move the king or capture the bishop. Then you get a queen. And again, it's game over. So uh, lastly, uh, but not leastly, you could move the queen, uh, move the king, let's say king of fate, but this also doesn't help you because of bishop h6 just winning the queen. And whatever you play, uh, white even has queen h8 check. Now the, the queen is pinned, you cannot uh, <laughs> capture anything due to the bishop, so you have to move and then you give up uh, even more material. Captures, captures, captures with check, king d6, and now, well, check, and now you get another queen, of course, uh, game over. So really, a game against all odds where Morphy definitely had a lot of fun and uh, he, he could have finished uh, much sooner, but he, he was just creating and creating and creating. And in the end, uh, you know, uh, basically we even forgot that Morphy started this game without a rook and a knight. So that's uh, that's how uh, good Morphy was, and uh, well, he just wanted to, to teach good old Charles some some uh, some chess. And it's uh, interesting to point out this game was played in 1854, but already in 1858... Uh, uh, Morion won the uh, New Orleans uh, <laughs> Chess Club Championship. Uh, Morphy did not play, of course, but still, uh, qu quite an achievement. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game, and uh, it's, uh, well, like I said, uh, very interesting to point out that Morphy finished law school in 1857. He, uh, he still had to wait a whole year before he starts uh, practicing law, and uh, even prior to that, in 1856, his uncle, uh, Ernest Morphy, uh, he started uh, sending challenges to all the strongest players in, in, uh, in America uh, if they wanted to, to play against Morphy, as he was sort of Morphy's biggest fan, uh, but uh, no one ever accepted the challenge. He even said that uh, there will be $300 to the winner. Uh, if, if you beat Morphe, you know, you get $300, which in those days was not a bad deal. And if Morphe beats you, you still get $100 out of those $300 for, you know, just for, for showing up. So it really wasn't a bad deal, but still, no one accepted a challenge because I guess people heard about uh, Morphe crushing uh, Leventhal and they didn't want to lose to lose to a little kid. Well, okay, he wasn't a little kid here. He was already in 1854. At this time, he was about 17. So, uh, but still, you know, people people didn't want to play. 
and so uh, his uh, his uncle and some very uh, you know uh, prosperous people uh, started talking about uh, uh, this congress. Maybe they should organize some sort of a chess event, maybe a, a chess congress or, or or maybe the first American chess congress, if you will. Uh, but we're gonna uh, get back to that uh, in the next video, and we're gonna talk about how how Morphy uh, visited, how Morphy almost uh, didn't go, and why he went, and so on. But we're, we have to leave something for the next video as well. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, our good friend Charles definitely didn't, but in the end he did learn something. So uh, he he probably even did, as uh, like I said, he did he did win the New Orleans Chess Club Championship uh, four years after this game. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Thomas Gall and Christoph Deckers for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. Really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can ch uh, check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Paul Morphy saga, uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.